Amen. Now, tonight, we are going to talk a little bit about the enemy's counterfeit for the place that God has provided for us. I want you to write down the verse, Ephesians 2, 6. We reference it a lot, but in Ephesians 2, 6, Paul said that Jesus seated us in heavenly places. So it's not just what he provided for us in eternity on the cross that we celebrate, which that's a lot to celebrate. I'm grateful that I don't have to go to hell. I'm grateful that I don't get what I deserve. But there's also a lot that Jesus did for us here and now in the form of an abundant life that we have to take advantage of. And everything that God did, the enemy created a counterfeit, right? You guys are all familiar with even how this works in the realm of fashion. So couture designers will roll out their latest and greatest all the way from a color palette to a certain style, and then every other franchise that appeals to every other market from Walmart to Dillard's to Steve Madden will basically copy. Everyone say copy, Copy. right? And I don't know why they do it. Maybe it's easier to just take what they know is going to be popular at a couture level And it saves them the creative inspiration. Or maybe they feel like everybody's going to want at this level. But if they don't want to spend that much money, we'll still provide it for them at a lower level. The idea is they're simply a counterfeit of what someone's original design was. Guys, that's everything that the enemy is. He is not a creator. He's a counterfeiter. Everything that God did, he hates. And so he counterfeits everything that God did, and he tries to sell you on it, which is why it's so important that from an early age, you understand how God's system works. That's why we come to church. It's not just because we're Christians. It's because we want to understand how his system works, because if you don't know the truth, what are you going to end up falling for? A lie. And the reality is the lie doesn't come to you in the mail with your name on it that says, this is a lie, please open. Because you wouldn't open it. You wouldn't open it if you knew it was a fake. When I've walked down um, the streets of New York and people are like hustling fake Rolexes, I'm not like wondering, oh my gosh, there must be a sale. It's pretty obvious that people don't sell Rolexes on the street like this. Do you know what I'm saying? You're just, this is a store. And why are you whispering? It's awkward. And stop standing so close to me. Oh, wait a minute. This is illegal. That's how the enemy comes at you. And so if you don't know what God's word says about everything, then you will fall for a lie. I absolutely hate drugs. I hate drugs. I don't like talking about drugs. I don't like preaching against drugs. I don't really like preaching against anything. I like preaching for stuff. And I don't know that I've ever really had this kind of message packaged before in all the years that I've done youth ministry. And I really tried to talk the Holy Spirit out of it multiple times. Like, oh, let's talk about this or this. It'll be great. But here we are. Let's get high. I want you to write down this first statement. You have a built-in high in relationship with Jesus, but you have to steward it. You have to steward it. And when I mean steward, I want to give you two facets of that. Steward means you have to know what it is, number one, and then you have to know how to use it, number two. So get this first statement down. You have a built-in high in relationship with Jesus, but you have to steward it. Because the moment you got saved, you were lifted up. Have you guys ever heard that? Who was that? Who raised me up? You know, who is that? What's that guy's name? Da, na, 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 na. You raised me up. You know, it's like opera, whatever. You have a built-in high in relationship with Jesus. But you have to steward it. Now, stewarding it is two parts. It's number one, knowing that you have it. Y'all, that's the worst. I almost put mouthwash on my grocery list or on my shopping list. It's not really groceries because I don't ever put food on there. It's like just things like creams and things that I need, you know? So I almost put that and then I opened, I was like, the Holy Spirit checked me like, open the cabinet, like open the closet. 
there was already mouthwash. So you have to know what you have. Stewarding means you have to know you have it. Like you have a high place. Like you got to know that. I have a high place. I want you to say that after me. I have a high place. I have a high place. Guys, and in a high place, it's like a free place. Okay? It's like a place that's above problems. That's above like difficulty. It's above sickness. It's above poverty. And then number two, you got to know how to use it. It's not enough that I have the mouthwash. I have to know how to use the mouthwash. Right? Or whatever else it is. You know, I have a, I have a, I think I might have told you, I was talking to um, Giselle about it. I got a, what is that thing? A crimper thing or waver thing, whatever. Somebody gave me one of those for Christmas and I really like it, but I haven't taken the time to really know how to use it. So it's not enough that you have something. So say it after me. I have a high place, but I have to steward it. Now here's your counterfeit. In Romans 1 21, the Bible says they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. Now we've already talked about the thanks part. So I want you guys to adjust that. Okay, because this isn't the vibe in praise and worship. Sometimes guys are like, like they worship like this. Guess who won't be being impatient? Me. Okay, so you guys ever been in praise and worship and the guys are like this? Like, that's not like a thing. That's not like an actual worship. Y'all, I still remember, and it's about, like, literally the 20th anniversary. Everyone say 20 anniversary. 20 anniversary of the first time I saw Pastor Greg. And he was standing at an altar during worship. And it wasn't like a big group of them all like in a vibe, like jumping. It was like a solo saint. And it wasn't at the altar call. And he wasn't like this, like Catholic altar boys. I love the Catholics. I'm not, I'm I'm just like, what is this? He wasn't like that. It was like arms, like straight up. And it was like, there was like this glow about him. You and I, we've got history. We go way, way back. That was one of the first things that I noticed about him was his unashamed worship. Unashamed. Because, like, I don't, like, if you're cool at this age when you literally have no reason to be cool anyway, what's going to happen when you're actually promoted in life? And you have a great car and you have a, do you know what I'm saying? Like if you're too cool right now, when you're like life, like that's what, like for you guys, like your life is just getting started. If you're already too cool for God, oh gosh, what's going to happen when you have a business? Peace out. Give on the, on the app if you give, but you're always at the lake. You're too busy. You're at the Cowboys game, box seats. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're cool, too cool for him now, like at the start of your life, uh, I ain't doing a guy like that. I ain't doing that. No guy that's like this. What are you doing? Now, if girls are weird, I don't, I, I'm sure they are. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't really pay attention a lot. Cause like, I just want to worship just to be close to you. They knew God, but they didn't worship him. Write this down. Our attention is worship. So it's not just your posture when we're like all together, but it's like in your life. But I think that your posture when we're all together kind of reflects how you are with him in real life. Your attention is your worship. So whatever you give the most of your attention to is what you worship, right? So if, if, if people wake and bake, And that's like a thing. And it is. That's your worship. And so here's the problem with that. Paul said they wouldn't worship him as God. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. Because you either stick with the original or you fall for a counterfeit. So you either know what your high place looks like and you stay in that place. Or you fall for a counterfeit. 
And the Holy Spirit has a counterfeit for what the Holy Spirit provides you in righteousness, peace, and joy. Everyone say, he's got a counterfeit. He's a counterfeiter. They began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping him, they worshiped idols. Meaning instead of giving him their attention, they started giving other things their attention. The rest of this phrase says that they began to serve things God created instead of the creator. Plants are created. Okay? God is the creator. When I give more attention to what is created than the actual creator. Now, that's not just drugs, but that's what this is about tonight. That's the lie. That's the counterfeit that we're unpacking. And it all boils down to you put your confidence in this instead of him for what? For peace, for joy, for fun. Why are you just trying to have fun? Whatever it is, you put your attention on this because that's what worship is. You put your attention on this, whether it's sorcery, it's pharmakia, which you can write down the verse, Re- Revelation 18, 23 says, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride will not be heard for your merchants were the great men of the earth for by your sorcery, all nations were deceived. What is sorcery? It's pharmakia. It's not just what's legal, but it's also what's illegal. And it destroys your ability to rule and reign. It destroys your ability to dominate. And he said, by this, all the nations of the world are deceived. So this is the counterfeit. And they're the counterfeit for the peace and the joy that comes from relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, most of you guys already know that because we use that phrase a lot. But if it's new to you, I encourage you to write it down. Drugs are the counterfeit for the peace and the joy that comes from a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it's deceptive. Well, I can stop. Then why don't you? You know, we had somebody. Yeah, we were trying to help. You know, that showed up on the, you know, on the porch. I'm not addicted. Okay, well, your morning, your morning's got like pills, it's got marijuana, and it's got meth. Like, that's not how you start a morning. Well, I don't need help. We didn't come to your house this morning. You came here. That's not, that's not a morning for a believer, right? And this is what Paul said in Romans 6, 12. Do not let sin control the way that you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Don't let any of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely. Everyone say completely. Give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body. Everyone say whole body. Use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under freedom, the freedom of God's grace. I want you to write it down. You can only serve one master. Everyone say one master. You can only worship one God. And so what the enemy wants to do, and and maybe in his manipulative strategies, he'll convince you that it's okay. But let me tell you, and you've heard me say it before, anytime you have to say it's okay, it's okay, it's not okay. Because when I got up this morning and I drank this green juice, okay, it's like PG got this juicer. Okay, he buys the juicer. I'm not, I'm not juicing things. Do you know what I'm saying? He buys the juicer and he gets a system in place. I think apples go in there, celery goes in there, ginger goes in there. Guys, it's not like the best part of waking up. It's not like Folgers in your cup. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like green, it's green juice. 
for healthy people. You know what I mean? So I drink it because, like, I'm a submitted wife, y'all. Like, I'm, like, my wife game is, like, next level. I just said that to speak positive faith words because when he was up super early this morning doing his laundry and I wasn't, I was like, you're a bad wife. Like, literally, that's what I thought. Like, somebody's got to do it. It's probably what he was thinking. She's not. <laughs> you wash my drawers. You know what I mean? So anyway, as I'm standing there drinking my juice, I'm not like telling myself this is a good thing. I know it's a good thing. Because anything that tastes that bad, you know it's good for you. I didn't have to tell myself that it was okay. Because I knew it was okay. So any time you have to tell yourself it's not a big deal. Whether it's a lie, whether it's a compromise, whether it's something you're watching, or it's like this message tonight, anything that you're putting in your body that you're justifying is not a big deal. You already know it's a big deal because you don't say it's not a big deal when you slam a bottle of water because you already know there's nothing in that bad for you. And if anything, it's the best thing to drink because it hydrates you, right? So the enemy is going to do everything that he can to subtly make you feel like you're not serving this. You're not serving this. It's not a big deal. Everybody's doing it. You only serve one master. And Colossians 3.17 says this. It says, do everything in the name of the Lord. You know, I knew of somebody who was endeavoring to stop smoking. And it's so important that we have these conversations now so that you don't ever end up in a place where you have to fight addiction in another season of your life. Just stay clean. Just stay clean. On this side of your adulthood, in your young adulthood, so then in like your old adulthood, you're already clean. And so what they started doing is every time they would smoke, because they were struggling, like could not quit. They would say, I just thank you, Father, that I smoked this cigarette in the name of Jesus. Because you can't smoke a cigarette in the name of Jesus. And before long, the desire was completely gone. I gave you this statement. Write it down. Just keep it simple. If you can't do it in his name, don't do it. I'm going to have this secret sexting relationship. Which, honestly. Girls, if a guy asks you for a picture, that is not a compliment. He's an idiot. Just keep it simple. If you can't do it in his name, if you can't smoke it in his name, I'm going to vape this in the name of Jesus. You can't. If you can't do it in his name, don't do it. Don't do it. And how will you know? Like, because if you're a Christian, now if you're in here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm going to give you a chance to do that at the end of service. But if you've already made Jesus the Lord of your life, there's something on the inside that's going to like scratch and you're going to know that ain't right. I can't do that. If you can't do it in the name of Jesus, don't do it. Now, that doesn't just apply to drugs, but that's what we're talking about tonight. If you can't do it in the name of Jesus, don't do it. Because Paul said, whatever you do, say whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. So she just started smoking in the name of Jesus. And before long, she had no more desire to smoke whatsoever because she can't smoke in the name of Jesus. And there's no greater name than the name name of Jesus. So you could actually do that, insert anything. I'm going to look at this inappropriate picture in the name of Jesus. And before long, it's not going to work. And light is always more powerful than darkness. Which means when you put the name of Jesus on any scene, any scene, he wins. The problem is you don't put his name on it. I want you to take a look at this video and then we'll pray. Hi, my name's Alyssa, and I was first exposed to drugs when I was 13 years old. I did it to fit in. I did it because I felt like it would make me cool around a certain crowd, and I didn't realize that it was setting death in motion in every area of my life. I didn't know how to get off that road, and um, I remember one instance I was driving home, and I was thinking to myself, like, is this my life? Is this who I am? Like, I don't know how I got here, and so I 
wanted a change. I walked into the doors of Choose Life at the old building in 2009, and I remember crying the whole service. It was the first time that I actually experienced the love of Christ, that I actually felt true joy in my life, peace like never before. Um, the enemy uses drugs to replicate what the Holy Ghost does in your life, and there's no way that that ever ends well. Like. By the grace of God, I made it out. By the grace of God, I'm here today with a family. And thank God my kids will never have to go through what I went through because of the love of God, because of our pastors who preach the truth into us. And I just pray, like, if you ever come to that moment, just don't do it. Hi, my name is Ashley Allison, and I've been coming to Choose Life for um, 12 years now. And um, my earliest memory of using and, and drinking was 12 years old. Um, it was normal. My whole family did it, so I thought it was just the normal way of life. Um, and the thrill of not getting caught and stealing it from them was probably why I kept doing it at that point. Um, then I started falling into depression when I was real, real young. Uh, flash forward, I'm a senior in high school. Um, drinking uh, before, during, and after school, I started uh, messing around with cocaine. Um, and I can just remember um, being very, very sad and hurt and not really knowing how to navigate my, my depression at that point. And then um, just the void that I was trying to fulfill um, when we moved to Choose Life in Hobbs. Um, and I have got saved and uh, learned from Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy, the real love of the Father and taking deep and just being all in is when real freedom came um, and, and realizing that it was a complete lie that I bought from the enemy. Hey y'all, my name is Daniel Sarmiento. I've been coming to Choose Life Church for about four years now. When I was 11, my parents got divorced and I fell into depression. I started looking for things to fill that void that I had in my heart. When I was 14, I started drinking and smoking on the regular. Uh, growing up Mexican, you're so accustomed to seeing alcohol at literally every single family event. Sometimes there's more cases of beer than kids at a kid's party. So you just feel like it's a way of life. It's just how things go. But now I see it clearly how the devil was lying to me and telling me that that, that alcohol, that that weed was going to help me feel peace, that it was going to help me feel joy. But it's only temporary, y'all. Like, look at this, this picture when I was 17. There's zero joy in this face. Zero joy. Uh, I remember one time I had so much anxiety that I couldn't even order through a drive through without stuttering. And I've never had that problem so i know that that was demonic uh when i was 27 i got invited to choose life church and within a couple weeks i just felt it to stop smoking and to stop drinking no one told me no one suggested it to me i did it on my own because of what pastor dean was talking about i wanted that life that jesus paid for and i'm so appreciative to pastor dean and pastor kathy for how transparent they are, you know, the things that they gave up in their past life. And, you know, like the Bible says, we are a new creation. And you could definitely see it in this picture. Like, this was from last year. You could definitely tell the difference. Um, drugs ain't it, y'all. Like, God is the only way. Hi, guys. My name is Julie Cohagen, and I've been coming to Choose Life for about 14 years now. Um, when I was in my 20s, I had two twin girls who died at birth. And after that, um, the doctors had given me prescription pain medication to just for my body to recover. But what I realized was when I took those pills, I didn't have to feel the emotions of the hurt of losing and burying my babies. So um, I just continued to lie to doctors telling them my back hurt and that I needed these things and I just got addicted to those pain pills just because they made me be able to just zone out. I didn't have to feel anything and I didn't have to think about it. But I'm just so thankful for Choose Life. I'm thankful for Pastor Dean and Kathy to show me that there's peace in Jesus, true peace, true peace that no pill can give you and I'm thankful that they've shown me how to rely on Him and trust in Him and know that um, there's no drug that can make you feel the way that Jesus can make you feel. Hello you. My name is Janai Williams and I've been going to Choose Life Church for six years and my story with drugs was with weed and this happened uh, before Christ and um, I was physically abused, mentally abused and I was neglected for drugs like almost my whole life um, but at, at a young age, I had a lot to deal with, and once I got peer pressured into trying drugs, I was like, oh, like, I don't have to think about this anymore. Like, I don't have, have a lot to think about, so I latched on, and 
obviously when I got sober I had those baggages that baggage still but now I had an addiction to deal with so it was like everything got worse when I started trying drugs so it's just like I would encourage you like if you have baggage if you have things that you're dealing with get help from like spiritual help from God from the people around you at this church that love you substance abuse it's never the answer trying drugs it's never the answer it always leaves you worse off than you were before so if you need help get help but just know like choose live church is like a great place to get help and you can do better hi guys my name is jesse dominguez i've been going to choose life for 17 years and uh doing drugs at a young age uh had a terrible impact in my life as an adult and through all those years, I lost a lot of years of my life. I uh, had a lot of issues with my family and my wife due to using drugs. Um, uh, by the grace of God, my wife started going to Choose Life. And uh, it took me about a year. I was still using drugs. You know, even while my family was going to church, I was still using drugs, never wanted to go. Um, I felt alone at that time, so I knew in my heart then that I had to make a change and then I could see the change in my family. So that's when I decided to go to Choose Life. And for the first time entry in Choose Life, uh, man, it completely turned me around. You know, I'm grateful for our pastors and that church. You know, the truth is, is really deep. Uh, it really helped me to separate me from doing these things. And I know you guys having this available is gonna impact you immediately. So please take this as a, a love letter from all of us that using drugs is not an answer to anything. Not to fit in, not to help you cope with anything. It's all a lie and a deception from the enemy. Uh, so whatever you can do to keep from others doing it, then I suggest that you just show them the love of God and choo choose life. Especially that. Choose life. Thank you. Hi. My name is Patricia Boyd, and I've been coming to Choose Life Church now for 14 years. I'm so very grateful for Pastors Dean and Kathy and just the stability and the consistency that they have shown me, the love that they've shown me. Um, drugs ruined my life. I uh, started doing drugs at the age of 13, came from a single family home. Um, my life was a mess. Um, went from popping pills every day um, at the age of 13 because I didn't like who I was and I just wanted to be something that I wasn't and I was searching for it in all the wrong places. Started with pills and it just progressed into harder and harder drugs. Um, it ruined my life. I got I got pregnant at the age of 16. And I mean, my life just went through one tragedy after another tragedy after another, another tragedy. It was not good. Um, the thing is, is that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And any way that he can come in to gain access into you, into your mind, um, and to your thoughts, uh, he's going to do it, whether it be through shame or hurt or, you know, just not having um, the stability of a family. Um, he's going to try any which way to come in and take what the father made for you to be. And he created you with purpose and value. And I'm just here to say that all of those things are a lie. Um, this is the real deal. And I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, like this is the real deal. A life with the father is a real life and a life with drugs will only make you go through tragedy after tragedy and you, your life will not end up right. Hi everyone, I'm James. I've been coming to Choose Life for two years now. I do wanna let y'all know that drugs are of this world and are from the enemy. I started doing drugs when I was 14 years old. I started with weed and as I grew older, it led to pills, coke, meth, heroin, and crack. I did it all. I sold them all. I thought I was on top. I thought I was the top of the world, living life. Lots of money, lots of friends. I lost it all. Money, jobs, friends, family, my kids, in and out of jail. Went to prison. Got out and narrowed it down to just smoking and selling weed and drinking. Thought that would be okay. I lost my girlfriend, my kids, and jobs. Today, the day changed when I walked into Choose Life. 
and learn the word from Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy. You see, I always went to church through my whole life. I read the Bible in prison, but nothing happened. But when I when I heard our pastors speak about the, having a relationship with our Father, and when I attacked the world with that relationship with our Father and Jesus Christ our Savior and the fire from the Holy Spirit, it was game over for anything and everyone that got in my way. I now have an amazing job, getting paid more than I ever have in my life. My girlfriend that left became my wife. I have money, a house, lots of friends that attack the world with the same fire. So yeah, thank you, Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy. And most of all, thank the Lord and choose life for teaching the world. Remember 1 Peter 5.8, be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. I love you guys. Stay sober, ready, and alert. The enemy's lurking, and you're the one he wants to hurt. So be careful. I love you guys. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not what you eat or what you drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. John 14, 1, I'm going to give you several verses that basically just give scriptural context to everything that was said. John 14, 1, do not let your heart be troubled, but believe in God, believe also in me. Which means there's a place in your relationship with him, just like these men and women talked about, that can override turbulence in your soul in a way that drugs actually amplify. Many people turn to them in a place of anxiety, in a place of depression, and instead of making it go away, it actually amplifies the anxiety and the depression. And the reality is marijuana or weed is just an entry drug, if you don't already know that. Like, that's where you start, which is why as a society, if we can make that legal, then we can desensitize an entire culture of people in order to pacify our agenda or perpetrate our agenda on them. Now, we obviously have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Like, I don't expect in this room to have any pushback as far as like, but it's legal. Like, I expect everyone in here to think on a little bit of a higher place. Like, I don't care what people say, what a dark, wicked world says is legal. I care about your relationship with God and the fact that every single one of these testimonies reflect individuals who yielded to substance abuse in your season as teenagers. John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, there'll be tribulation, but in him, there's not peace in drugs, there's not peace in substance. There's only peace in him. Can I get an amen? Acts 3.19 says, repent, which means change your mind so that times of refreshing come where? In the Lord. Times of refreshing don't come at the bar. Times of refreshing don't come with a hit. They just don't. Times of refreshing come in the Holy Ghost. And lastly, 1 Peter 1.8 and you guys know this first. We used it a lot within this last week. You never saw him, yet you love him. And you still don't see him, yet you trust him. How? With laughter and singing. The Bible says, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Like so much joy. Like, guys, I'm telling you, especially this year, at the very beginning of the year, I faced something, my sister and I and our family. And I was like, oh, this is bad. It was like January 4th. I'm like, this is like the beginning of the new year. And I was like, this is bad. This is so bad. Like, this is, this is bad. But there was something on the inside of me that just had total calm in the midst of that storm. And in that place, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, this will pass. And guess what? As fast as this horrible thing came, it left. And guess who stays on top? We stay on stop, on top. So here's the call tonight. Whether you've already used, whether you've been tempted, or it's not even been a, thi been a thing, the goal tonight is just to take a stand, to draw a line in the sand and say, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to pray over you. 
And honestly, it's not going to, I've already taken this stand. The people that are in this room have already taken this stand. So this is between you and the father. And so that's the first call. The second call is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So we're going to start with the stand that just says, you know what? It's, I'm not going down that road. Not now, not ever, or not again. So if that's you, just take a stand and I'm going to pray over you. And then we'll do um, an altar call for those of you that have never made Jesus the Lord of your life.